This is the all new from the ground up 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB 250 4 Matic. Today we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Autos, selling beautiful Mercedes-Benz cars and SUVs. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two guys, guys in a ride. ride. And Nathan, what are we taking a look at today? Today we are taking a look at the brand new Mercedes-Benz GLB 250 4 Matic. That's right, but hey, before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, SUVs, and you want to know about how to operate all the technology that's built into these cars, and you love cool collector car stories, take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and click on the bell notifications up above so you never miss a video. That's right, Nate, so what do you say? Let's, Let's go, go for, for a ride. ride. All right, so welcome to our uh, uh, in-depth detail look at the uh, MBUX system. So to start with, um, the driver's information center, the MBUX is one of the best systems I've seen out there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is you basically have three zones uh, on your dashboard. You've got the left, the center, and the right. Now, if you, this vehicle does not have heads-up display, but if yours did, which is an option, then you would have a fourth way to configure what's on your screen. So we have three zones. So what, in order to access each one of these, you simply use the trackpad to swipe left, right. So I'm gonna go over here, you notice that this highlights, and you'll, then you'll notice these little red and white dots that shows you how many different screens you have so I'm over here I'm gonna scroll down so I have a clock I've got um, let's see it tells me how many miles I've gone how many hours it's been operating my average miles per gallon my average speed tells me this kind of stays constant down here my gas gauge and my uh, how many miles I have left to empty scroll oops let's go over here scroll down once more and now I've got uh, from reset the other one was from start Okay, coming down here, I think, did I miss one? Nope, okay. Uh, route schedule, okay. So if I have um, a route plotted, then it will show information up here. And uh, here's my media, if I wanna have my media show up in here. Or I can go down here and I get uh, the angle um, left, right of the car and the angle up or back, front or back of the car as well as the compass direction up here. And then down here, I also get um, a, a, a needle reading, okay? From this side, I get it from plus 35 to minus 35 for my angle and minus 100 to plus 100 for my angle. All right, okay, so in the center area, you, you get the same kind of thing. You're gonna see some white dots with a with a red one. Red one means that's the screen you're on. Okay, so I get that just by swiping here. So here I go. So I've got my digital uh, miles per hour as well as some information on miles. If I scroll down, I get just a digital speedometer. If I go one more, I get consumption. So it's showing me uh, an average from start gallons per hour used. If I go down here, I can get a little bit of a readout as I'm driving um, as to how my acceleration is, my constant speed, and then coasting. And if I go down one more, I can get my, um, my how many miles I've gone, how many, time, um, how many hours I've been driving since the, since the beginning, average miles per ga gallon and average speed. And then if I go down once more, I get, uh, this is from the reset, and then um, if anything I want, any one of these selections here, I can make it a full display in the center, these, these center things. So if I go here, let's, let's, let's just pick this one, okay, oops, no, okay, all right, so, um, the things that are applicable up, up here that you change, you can make them full screen by going to the last dot, hit display, 
and you notice how it changes, okay? So when I do that, I get a couple of things that they automatically put in for you. Um, you know, this is the charge gauge that we saw earlier. We got your acceleration, your constant speed, and your coasting, uh, and then of course your digital miles per hour. So that just goes full screen. All right, if I press the back button, okay, I'm gonna swipe over to the right, and now I'm gonna do the right center. You see the red dot with the white lines. So let's just go to the top one. Oops, I went too far. All right, so here you have your RPM gauge. You have your consumption, which we saw on the other side. Um, so you, you have the option of putting things in different windows, okay? Uh, this is navigation. And then over here, this is, you know, it measures how far things are away from you. You see the, the little emblem back here with the um, blind spot warning, okay? And then here you can watch which wheels are engaged in the, in the, with the powertrain as far as your formatic system goes, okay? Right? So you get some nice graphics. They're not lit up now, but these little ghosted out ones will light up showing how much uh, power is going to that particular wheel. Okay, so that's your three different parts of the driver's information center. Now down here, of course, you've got your gear selector. And uh, there's an interesting feature on this car that Rob and I had not seen before. But it's obviously for the case of a kid gets in and he puts his foot on the brake and hits drive. The car doesn't go. So if I open my door, I have my seatbelts off right now. So let's, let's, let's just say... Um, that I got the door partially open. And it can actually be partially closed too. And I put it in drive. If I try to go, first of all, it warns me. Okay, and then if I take my foot off and I try to accelerate, it actually breaks the back tires. You see that down here? All the tires, I got traction going to all of them, but it's breaking them, which is really just kind of a cool safety feature. And close that door and get rid of that. So, lots of ways to customize this screen. All right, well, let's move over to the infotainment screen. Uh, on the infotainment screen, there are basically three screens. So this, the, the first one is the one you're seeing. So this has uh, basic apps like phone, uh, radio, media, comfort, info, Mercedes me, and apps, and then settings. But if I scroll down with the trackpad, and again, I'm using the trackpad on the right side of the steering wheel, all right? If I scroll down, I now get themes, and I have adventure, trip, experience, efficiency, lounge, standard, and I can even create my own theme. If I scroll downwards once more, I get the favorites, and that's where you have that little favorite button on the steering wheel that you can access, okay? So in here, I've got uh, the setup assistant. I've got sound, display off, operator's manual, seat kinetics, or create a favorite. All right, so let's go back to the very top. So let's start with phone. So if I click on phone, and I'm just clicking the center trackpad, and it says connect a device. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So this is for phone one. You can have up to two phones connected. So I'm a connect device. And it says you can now connect your vehicle to MBUX 99335 to your device via Bluetooth. So I'm going to take out my phone. And I'm going to go into settings. And I'm going to go to Bluetooth settings. And I'm going to look here because I should see MBUX 99335. And I do. It's right on my phone. It's right here. So I'm going to click that. And... Shows up, Nathan's iPhone. Ask you, does the passcode 602547 match that on the following device? Yes. So I hit pair and I hit yes here. And then it may allow, and I ask you if it wants to sync things. Okay. And then you can say yes or no. All right. So now I'm going to turn my phone off because I'm done with that. That's all it takes. Um, do you want to authorize Mercedes Me from your iPhone? Okay. So let's go. Yes. And welcome to the Mercedes Me app. We'll go next. Okay. Now you you would want to have 
the Mercedes Me app already downloaded to your phone. And then there are some other steps that, that um, you can take to do it now. Right now, because the vehicle hasn't been registered yet, I can't get um, into the Mercedes Me app to show you. But that'll do things like uh, remote unlock and lock your car, remote start, that kind of stuff, all from your phone. Okay, but my phone itself is connected. So I'm going to just set that down there. And if I swipe, I can look at recent calls, I can look at contacts, or I can add favorites. Okay, now, if I go down here, I can dial. Okay, if I'm gonna hit the back button, if I go over here, I've got texting features. Hit the back, I'm hitting the back button to get out of that. Now, if I go here, okay, I can connect a new device or I can take a look at just my phone, okay? And I can take a look at music or there's some more things here. Disconnect or deauthorize. Well, not going to do that quite yet, but I'm going to go to music for a minute. And it disconnected the music. So now it's phone only. So it's kind of neat the way you can customize that. So I'm going to click that back on and tell it to connect because obviously... One of the reasons I want that is for my music. Now, I'm going to go back to home for a minute. And we're going to turn down the volume here. So, if, I, if, if I'm now on the app, so I'm going to go back. Now my phone's connected. It says my name up there. Again, this by clicking on it, I get those options. Okay, I'm going to go back. I can scroll down and I get this icon. So, if I click on the, uh, I get recent calls. Okay? And if I go over to this one here... Um, I get contacts, okay? And I'll go back again. All right. So uh, let's go back again one more. All right. So that's for the phone. Notice it isn't media at all. It's just phone. So now if I go up over here and I scroll over, um, my next app is going to be a radio. But we're going to switch over to media for a minute because we're talking about the phone. And I'm going to click on media. And the first thing I'm going to do here is it's connected with Bluetooth and it's it's playing one of my songs off my phone already. So it's automatically started my play. Now, um, let's say that I want something different here. If I go down to music and I click on it, I can actually search for things. Okay. I go back. If I go over to this, oops. Okay. Current track list. Okay. I can go down here, I can, if I scroll over to my left, I can look at radio, playlist, my music, um, and, okay, and then I can go over here, and I can scroll through these and play whichever one I want, okay? So, let's, let's go back, oops, went back too far. All right, so if I go over here, I've got a play pause button, so I can pause my music right from my trackpad. Okay, if I go over one more, Okay, again, that's just another way to connect a device. And then over here is settings. Okay, so I've got an equalizer, a balance and fader, and volume. So for equalizer, it gives you bass, mid, and treble, which you can then scroll over and then you can adjust those. If I go over to balance, oops, balance and fader, it changes the graphics right away. Okay, and then if I just swipe over to the right, or I'm sorry, click the trackpad, I can change the balance. Oh, I like the graphics. Okay, and if I go up, okay, if I want to do um, general, I can hit general, and now I've got device manager. So let's go back. Okay, so um, just really, really easy uh, to work. Let's say I want, you know, for me, I want Pandora, right? Now, I'm not hooked through with the cable, and so I do have to go to my phone. But if I went to my phone before I started driving, depends on where you live. Most states have a no cell phone use law. And let's say that I started Pandora. Okay, so if I do that, there I go, I got Pandora going. And came right up. Yes, I like some Irish music. All right, so hit the back button again. Okay, let's go back to radio. Okay, so here, if I click on there, I have got 
uh, my presets here and notice the arrows if I if I click to the right it's gonna give me more presets okay and just to show you right here because we've got a couple blanks to add a preset okay if I'm on 92.5 FM which I don't know what it is if I click and hold the track button it sets it I can also click and hold on the screen and it'll do the same thing and then down here you've got the same kind of options that you had under your phone so I can go down here and I can look at stations I can search for one like you just like you could search for music on your phone I can go to a list which gives me all sorts of different FM radios right here okay if I also want to hear anything with emergency warnings as far as weather goes or whatever I can go down there okay this is going to be a mute button and then over here because you can't play or stop radio you can mute it here you've got HD radio now it's active now it's not and then you can go to your settings so all the media stuff is set up the same way just depends on what source you're on these are like track buttons up here so if I get up here okay if I scroll over whoops I hit the wrong button sorry okay let's go back to FM radio for a minute okay you notice all I'm doing here is I'm swiping the trackpad, I'm not clicking on it, and it's giving me all these icons. Kind of like how they're ghosted out in the background. But I'm just swiping left or right to change presets. All right, let's go to home for a minute. Let's uh, go over, we did uh, media and Bluetooth. We're gonna go to comfort. So if I click on the trackpad, this car does come with seat kinetics. Your car may come with massaging seats, but that'll all be all be found under comfort. Okay, so if I go over here, um, I get the driver's seat. If I go over here, I get the passenger seat. Okay, so you can see what's happening on the passenger seat. The bolsters are moving a little bit. Okay, and so is the bottom. Okay, and if I scroll up to the settings right here I can have it for backrest and seat surface I can have it for just the backrest or I can have it for just the seat service surface excuse me I'm gonna switch it back there and then I can change the duration to short medium or long and then it automatically turns itself off okay this is all touch screen so everything you see on here you can touch now in addition to seat comfort you have ambient lighting so if I go up and I switch over and I'm just using the trackpad to do that okay I can adjust color. So if I go over here, I get multicolor. I get uh, multicolor. So if I hit multicolor here, I can go and change the different colors. So if you look, whoops, I got to keep it going the same way here. Now, everything is changed to red. You can see the glow on the inside of the car icon everywhere here. You can see the change. Okay. Okay, I just click the trackpad when I'm happy with it. If I want multicolors, I can turn that on. And once I turn that on, I can turn on multicolor animation. Okay, so ocean blue kind of gives you a graphic view of what it's gonna look like. Purple sky, I mean, my gosh, you got a long list here. Okay, but what it does is the car actually goes through a cycle of colors for you. So it's never all the same. So you don't want to be bored by the same color, you can do that. All right, let's hit the back button here, and then we're going to go to brightness. Okay, and then in brightness, of course, you can adjust all everything all at once. So here, here they're at 100%. You click the trackpad, now you can scroll. Okay, if you want to affect only one zone, you can hit brightness zones, click over, and now you have individual control. And again, once you get to the dot, you have to click on the trackpad, and then you can raise or lower it but just tons of controls. All right, let's hit the back button and we'll hit it one more time. And let's go over to info. Okay, under info, uh, you are gonna get uh, four things listed up here. Vehicle, engine, consumption, and owner's manual. Owner's manual is owner's manual. You can go in here and digitally look at your owner's manual, look things up. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here to vehicle and for some reason you go to these screens and like you're swiping left and right and it doesn't go swipe up because it usually starts down here somewhere in the middle and then you get this so under vehicle 
I'm going to get a nice icon of my car. And if I turn certain things on, like, uh, say, the lights, it shows up. Okay? And if I want to make a full screen, if I just click on there, or, or I can use a trackpad, it takes away all the other, all the other background stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna go back here. Um, I also have, let's see, oh, gotta scroll up, go to engine. So here I get some really cool gauges that I don't uh, always get on the uh, dashboard. Driver's information center. So here I've got battery voltage, charge air pressure. I've got horsepower. <laughs> That's an interesting one. And volts. That's volts. That's horsepower. Pound foot. I mean, I'm assuming that's yeah, that's torque, um, and then psi, and then over here you've got uh, another gauge for temperature, and then over here you've got your oil pressure gauge. So I mean, some really cool gauges you can have uh, right there. Okay, let's swipe over to consumption. If you're more economically minded, which isn't really me, but it's Rob, so we'll show you just for Rob's sake. All right, uh, so over here. You can uh, basically what you have is you can set the distance or the time. So I can go for seven and a half minutes, 30 minutes, 90 minutes, or three hours. And it will show you what your average uh, cons gas consumption is over that time. It'll make like a graph. Okay, last one I'll show you quick is just op operator's manual. Click on that and it's going to open up. Uh, while that's doing that, it's, it's worth mentioning that um, this car receives over the air updates. So in the background, it'll constantly be updating itself. All right, and then here are your different things. So you you wanna you want a tip, you want to you want to see if there's any messages, bookmarks. You can oh, so you can bookmark things, which is cool. So if you have something you want to come back to. All right, so let's just go back here, okay, and then let's switch over here to the Mercedes Me and Apps. And I wish I could connect this to show it to you, but. Um, I've showed you kind of what it, what what it's done, uh, what it can do. Um, so I won't be able to get into these things, but they are there. And if I go over one more, I get settings. So under settings here, so for ESP here, Electronic Stability Program, if I click on that, I can turn it on or off. I obviously live in Minnesota, so I want that on. Okay. Down here, I've got like, uh, would be like hill descent control on or off. And then you can control the speed with your cruise control. Okay, uh, up here, I've got assistance. So uh, this is where some of your safety systems are. So active brake assist, do I want it early, medium, late, or off? And you just scroll to what, what you want and click the track that. I am not gonna change it. Attention assist. This is what tells you if you're taking your hands off your steering wheel, if you're swerving too much, whatever. Do you want it sensitive, standard, or off? Again, just roll, scroll to what you want and click the trackpad. All right, blind spot assist. That one is just sort of an off or on. And when it's on, it shows you the cool little graphics where it's looking. Okay, I'm going to swipe back up. I'm going to go to vehicle. All right, now... You can select the driving mode by clicking on dynamic. You can go individual configuration or request at start. So if I go individual configuration, I have three things I can control. The drive, the steering, and um, the drive, the steering, and the ESP. So if I click on drive, I can now select between eco, comfort, sport, and manual. So I'm gonna go to sport. Okay, then I hit the back button and I go to steering. Steering, I want is comfort. So I want a sporty, uh, sporty acceleration, but comfortable steering. I'll go back one more. ESP, again, I want it as sport in this case. Okay, don't want it with the roof load. Okay, and then we'll go back. Okay, you could also tell it to request at start. Now, if you do that, every time you start the car, it's gonna ask you. So um, don't do that unless you wanna answer a question right away. All right, let's go up here. We'll go to the lights. Okay, now here's where I can, another way I can change ambient lighting. So if I click on that, I'm gonna go to the same thing that I showed you earlier, and or, and or seat comfort. So, already showed you that, it's just a different way to do it. I'm gonna hit the back button, exterior lighting delay. 
So if I go here, I can set it for 60, 45, 30, or 15 seconds. So when I hit that remote or I stop the car and get out, the exterior lights stay on for a while. Down here, you've got interior lighting delay, which is either on or off. So you close the door and the lights stay on for a little bit and then they kind of do a theater dimming thing. And then of course you have daytime running lights, on or off, uh, and then locator lighting. That's when you hit your remote, you can get your puddle lights. And then again, that's just an on or off. Usually these things with the little LED on the side are simple pushes of the trackpad, they're either on or they're off. All right, one more under here and that's system. So if I go under here, um, now, designs and displays. So if I click on this, um, I can click on designs and I can change it from classic to sport to progressive. And then I can do another ambient light adjustment. Okay, so if you look at the dashboard here, what's gonna happen is as soon as I click on progressive, I get a change. Now you notice like pretty much all my gauges stay the same, but the colors changed. So it's like a background thing, okay? Let's go to classic. Okay, so it's not changing your gauges, it's changing the background images and the graphics that are in the background, which I think is kind of cool. All right, so let's go, let's go back, okay? And I can go to display brightness, so I can, I can control that here, although there is a manual control that I can use down here as well, okay? I can turn the display off if I want by clicking on the trackpad or I can set it for day night. So in other words, during the day, it's bright, during the night it dims automatically. All right, so we'll go back again. Now, under controls. Hmm, keyboards and handwriting. Okay, so you can select the kind of keyboard you want when it gives you the Qtree keyboard on your screen. Um, or you can read out handwriting recognition if you want to handwrite. I don't know how easy that would be on a flat surface, but it's there if you want to use it. Okay, touchpad sensitivity. Okay, touch control sensitivity. Touchpad tap. Haptic feedback. I mean, just, whew, nice. All right, so let's let's click on Linguatronic. This is where, this is the, the, the uh, like the Mercedes, the Frank system on the car, shall we call it today. Now. Usually the system activates by saying, you say, hey, Mercedes, but this is where you can turn that on or off. So I go, if I now say, hey, Mercedes, doesn't do a thing, but if I click here, whoops, hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Cancel. You can do online voice control, online control for subscribers. Uh, contacts for online use, speak through, I mean, there's just, oh my gosh, so many different things. All right, press the home key, let's go down. These are all shortcuts, by the way, underneath for, for each of the apps. So if I go down another one, okay, here I've got some themes. Now this will change your dashboard. So if I go to trip, okay, it changes my dashboard. Okay, let's switch over again to experience. Okay, so this screen changes, but so does the driver's information screen. Right. So on a, for efficiency, if I select that one, it's gonna give me, um, wow, okay, so I've got charge gauge over here. I've got uh, an eco display over here. Um, I mean, <laughs> this is really cool. Okay, and it gives me a consumption uh, right there in the middle screen. Now, in addition to all that, if you want to, you can create a theme. Okay, now the last part of the uh, infotainment screen, if I scroll down further, is where you have favorites. Okay, so basically you, you have you have a bunch of favorites and they're in a certain order and you can see them on the screen. So by pressing the favorites button on the steering wheel, you can access those things. So if I press down, okay, I get my setup assistant, okay? If I want to uh, activate that, I can click that up I'm not going to go through there because it's a brand new car, but I hit start and it would take me through um, that setup assistant. All right, so let's go over to sound for a minute. That's another favorite. Okay, if I go down here again, I, it's just a shortcut to things we've already seen. 
Okay, but it's the things that are important to you that you want quickly. Like, do you want it to hit your display on or off? Okay, so there you go. Now it's off, and now it's on. Now, the way the screen works, this set new orders does not have to do with the order of the favorites. It has to do with the order of, do you want themes first or favorites first as you scroll down? So if I go to themes, let's say if I click on favorites. There we go. Now favorites is at the top above themes. So I click click again and click back. Now favorites is above themes. So you can change that. The other thing you can do is create a theme. Oh no, sorry, not create a theme. Let's go up here. Now my things are messed up. You can create a favorite. So if Mercedes doesn't already have the icon that you want, press here on create a favorite and you can select between radio, media, phone, comfort, info, vehicle, and system. 